So if you live in a country or travel to a destination where you experience extreme low temperatures like minus 20 degrees Celsius or even lower, it can be really frustrating when you first head out to capture some amazing FPV shots with your Avara or just go out to practice. And you might also experience that your flight time is shorter than usual. So in today's video, I wanna share some tips and tricks on how you can have a longer flight time with your Avara when flying in cold temperatures. Now here in Norway, we have four seasons. So each season is completely different. So my Avara has been exposed to different types of weather and different types of temperatures. Now lately, I've been flying all three modes, the normal sport and manual mode in minus 15 degrees degrees Celsius and obtain an average flight time of about 11 to 12 minutes. So let's go through the steps on how I maximize my flight time with the Avara. So number one is gonna be preparation. Before heading out, I always make sure that my batteries are fully charged. I also bring four batteries because cold weather will drain your battery faster. So the more batteries you have, the better. The Avara has 18 minutes of flight time in optimal conditions. So taking this out in sub-zero temperatures with some wind as well, is gonna be as far away from optimal conditions as I can get. And this also means you could experience shorter flight times. Sometimes you won't be able to fly more than a couple of minutes. So having a few extra batteries fully charged would definitely help you on the way. Now, I also check the Avara itself before I head out. I go through the entire aircraft outside here to see if there is any damage to the Avara that I need to fix before heading out and especially the props. If the props have any hits to them, like you can see the, some scratches or there is, you know, tiny parts of the propellers or one of the blades uh, missing, not the entire blade, but just, you know, a small part of it, which has happened, then I prefer to change all those props, which has some you know, marks on them, just to make sure that everything is optimal once I go out and fly in low temperatures. Number two, settings. One of the things I always do before I head out to shoot with the Avara is to set my settings. Most of the time though, these are just the same settings and there's not much adjustments needed other than changing the ISO or maybe the shutter speed and the resolution. But if you're brand new to the Avara or going to fly for the first time in cold snowy weather, it's important to set most of your settings before you take off. You can do this before you head out or when you are sitting in your car. So basically to maximize the amount of flight time you have, you don't want to be messing around with settings when you're airborne, especially if you're stuck with one or two batteries. And you should also use an ND filter when you're out shooting videos where there's a lot of snow because this will prevent a too high shutter and will give you the optimal image quality. So when I head out, I usually bring the car as close to the spot I want to film as possible. This allows me to keep the batteries as warm as possible and to keep them charged. Now I use the DJI car charger to charge the batteries and other devices and I'm actually extremely satisfied with the quality. It's a product I highly recommend. It also charges at 63-ish watts, which is pretty close to the 65 watts stated. So a battery will charge from about 20 to 100% in less than 40 minutes. So having four batteries will keep me going for hours or as long as I need. But for hiking with the Avara, there's a complete different story. So hiking for a longer distance in cold weather will most likely drain some of your battery on the way. But there is a few ways to prevent this. So instead of storing your batteries in your backpack, shoulder bag or in your pocket, place each battery on the inside of your jacket. Your body heat will be more consistent and keep the batteries warmer. In addition, you can also put your batteries inside a wool sock and then place it inside your jacket. So I've now been walking for about 30 minutes. I have one battery in the wool sock 
inside of my jacket. I have another one uh, and I also have one on the outside of my jacket and uh, the last one is actually connected to the Alvada. So it's going to be interesting to see if there is any differences between the batteries once we connect them to the Alvada. So we're going to start with the wool sock. We're now at the lookout here. It's actually quite nice and we're going to be flying some Alvada here with the motion controller. So let's connect the four batteries and see if there's actually any differences now after 30 minutes in minus 8 degrees Celsius. If we take a look at the three images here, you can see that there is a difference between the outside pocket on my jacket versus the inside pocket with and without the wool sock. Now the hike I was doing from the car was only about 20 minutes or so. So for a longer hike, the difference would be even bigger. Now moving over to number four, start slow. You don't want to push your Avada too much because it's going to have a huge impact on your battery life. Now using the Avada batteries or any LiPo batteries in cold temperature is not really recommended. The cold temperatures will drain your battery extremely fast, especially if you go full speed, zero to hundred immediately after takeoff. So it's always going to be better to start off with a slower flight in either normal or sports mode to get the battery warmed up. The time you get in the air might not be significantly longer than if you would go straight into manual mode and fly that way, but doing so will also prevent any risk of damaging your batteries. Now moving over to number five, one of the most important things when it comes to flying your drone in cold temperatures, speed. So why is speed so important? Well, it has a huge impact on how long you're able to fly. The harder you push the sticks, the shorter time you will have in cold temperatures. And the difference is huge. The more speed you put on the Avada, the colder it will get from the airflow pushing through. And this will greatly reduce your flight time and the distance you're able to fly. As fun as it is to fly at high speed in manual mode with the Avada, it's more important to lower the speed to both give you a longer flight time and prevent anything happening to your drone. At the end, you can always speed up the clip in post-production to make it look epic. One of the worst enemies for any drone, the wind. So not only can the wind give you unstable footage, but it can also drastically reduce your flight time as the motors has to run faster to keep your drone level. Flying in manual mode, the wind won't do much to your Avara since you're in control of all directions, but cold temperatures and high winds are not a good combination for your battery life, and you might experience significant drops in flight time. In some scenarios, you will also be forced to push the sticks even further to keep the drone leveled or at the angle of choice. So the best way would be to either prevent flying in high winds or to fly as low as possible. Now moving over to number seven, let's talk about distance. Now, first off, here in Europe, we have the CE version of the Avada, so I highly recommend getting the FCC hack to get a better signal. Even if you're just flying in a radius of 100 meters, it's always better to have optimal signal, especially when you fly in low temperatures. This will also prevent early loss of signal and give you full control at a greater distance or behind objects, and you won't get this with the CE mode. And flying in low temperatures, everything counts. So I highly recommend that you grab the FCC hack. I will leave it down in the description below with a guide on how you install it and get it to work with your Avara. So when you're out flying and you see a spot which looks epic, you, you want to get there as fast as possible, right? And there's no better way to get there fast than just flip it into manual mode and then go for it, right? You know, it's, you're going to have a blast getting out to that spot. But once you get there, what are you going to do? You have no battery life left. Now, in most scenarios, this would work. You could just flip it to manual mode and fly out and you should be okay. But when you're hitting minus 10 degrees Celsius or lower, uh, your battery will drop to about 50% within a minute. This is a huge beginner mistake and something that new pilots should really be aware of. Now, the best way to get around if you need to travel at a distance is to use either normal or sports mode. This completely depends on the location you're at, but this is where practice is key especially if you're flying in these type of temperatures more than just once. Even though it takes longer to get to the spot, you won't drain as much battery as if you were going into manual mode. So the more you know about the behavior of the Avara and how the LiPo battery works in low temperatures, the better you know its limits and how to maximize your battery in low temperatures. So the only thing I can say is that start in normal mode and just find a point of interest head out there, see how much battery you have left once you get out there, then do the same thing in sports mode, and then 
the same thing in manual mode. And you can also try different speeds and see what speed is the best for traveling that distance, which speed and which mode will give you the most battery once you reach that point of interest. Now, since we're working with LiPo batteries, flying these in low temperatures, we don't want to push them too far. Over time, it might damage the battery and make it unstable, which can be a high risk when flying. Even though this is rare, uh, it's important to know the limits in high or low temperatures. The optimal temperature is between 5 and 20 degrees Celsius. So if the temperature gets below this point, it can actually result in loss of capacity because of the chemical reactions slowing down. And the same thing goes for opposite conditions. If the temperature is extremely high, the batteries might catch fire or explode. The temperature range of the Avara is from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius or 14 to 104 Fahrenheit. Even though the batteries have own cells for extreme temperatures, which exceeds the minus 10 degrees Celsius, flying in lower temperatures should be done with caution. And depending on the distance traveled, I wouldn't actually recommend pushing the battery lower than 20%. So the optimal way of flying will be to get as close to the position you want to film as possible. This will prevent a long distance flight and will give you a longer flight time and a shorter return to home if you should experience any unwanted behaviors or warnings. Now let's talk about the motion controller. The motion controller and low temperatures, sub-zero temperatures, probably the best controller to use. Now, if you don't need to fly in manual mode to get the shot, you're better off using the motion controller if you ask me. The motion controller can also be a really good option to fake the true FPV look as the motion is in your hand. Now, you can't really dive using the motion controller, but if you enable head tracking, you can get as close as possible to a half dive uh, without any issues just by tilting your head down. So one really awesome feature if you you know if you're stuck with a motion controller or if you prefer to use the motion controller and you want to fake a dive you can easily do that with the motion controller and head tracking and uh, it's actually a pretty neat feature and in cold weather it might actually be easier to use the motion controller because of the joystick feel of it and you only have one trigger button to pull which is this this is the only button you need to pull you have the record button, you pull the trigger and you let go and the aircraft will stop. So only one button to push. That means it's going to be so much easier to wear some really comfortable gloves when you are flying this. That will also keep your hand warm, which will bring you know, more stable motion to your aircraft. So overall, the motion controller is actually not a bad idea when flying in low temperatures. Even though manual mode is more fun and can give you some really insane shots, sometimes you don't need more than sports mode. And for normal and sports mode, I actually prefer the motion controller over the FPV controller because I find it really hard to fly this in normal and sports mode. Believe it or not, I don't like it. But with this, it feels like I have more motion and it's easier. So I've been actually flying sports mode quite a lot lately with the motion controller and I like it. I like it. It's, it's actually pretty fun. Now moving over to the last one here. This is as simple as a power bank, a power bank. You can't travel or go anywhere with your Avada without a power bank. I mean, the batteries are 18 minutes of flight time in optimal conditions. No one has ever flown in optimal conditions. So you might get between, I would say seven and 12 minutes in low temperatures, depending on the distance and everything that we're going through in this video. But having a power bank is essential and it's gonna give you more flights. Uh, you can, let's say you have four batteries, you can do like me, I just, you know, when I fly one, it comes back, I plug the next one in, put that to charge and I just repeat that process. And I always have a battery which is fully charged once I, you know, land the drone and want to go for another spin. Also, this power bank that I'm using here is the Power Core, the Anchor Power Core Elite 326 k 87 watts. And this can actually charge my Avada batteries a couple of times, so I'm really satisfied with this. Now I now have two and just, you know, waiting to get my third one. Extremely portable, one of the best that I've used, if not the best power bank extremely, extremely good. Links down in the description below. 
So there you have my 10 tips on how you can fly the Avara safer and longer in low temperatures. I really hope that you found some value in this video and if you did that, let me know down in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe and hit that like button for the algorithm that would be highly appreciated. So if you have any questions related to the Avara, let me know down in the comment section below and all the links related to this video will be down there as well so go check them out if you want to do that and until next time take care fly safe and i will see you in the next video